So I just finished Dune 2. And I'm a tin and my whole lot of popcorn. Oh my God, he's gonna eat you. Look at me, I have this beautiful Dune 2 popcorn tin, which cost me an arm and a leg, unless I found it off the back of a truck and didn't pay anything. But look at this thing, it's amazing. We'll have some fun with this later in a different video, I promise. Bro, he's gonna eat you. <laughs> but I just finished Dune 2, and I'm still processing what I saw. You know, it's interesting, you know, obviously it's part, there's part one and part two and taken as a whole. I still haven't digested it as part one and part two. I'm really just taking in part two. And I'm walking away with that same feeling that I have from a lot of Denis Villeneuve's movies. Are they just kind of beautiful but empty and soulless? Did I feel anything at the end of this? I am not 100% sure. I'm still processing my feeling, feelings about this. I am a big, giant Dune fan. I've read all six books at least three to four, maybe even five times each. So I'm a big fan of uh, Frank Herbert's original 1965 novel, Dune, plus all the rest of them. And, folks, it gets weirder from here. And it seems like there's a future to Dune. But... Let's just take, I guess the biggest thing I, I, I want to mention is um, what some of the changes are and why they are there. I think that's what's got me kind of hung up. There, there are quite a few changes between the book and the movie, and I, I'm just trying to process the movie. I think I'm going to make a video just on the differences from the book because there's a pretty good article and I'd like to talk about it more. But in this, I'd really like to just talk about how I felt about it, how the audience felt about it, because they often call this the unfilmable franchise, if it is even a franchise, but it's like an unfilmable movie, and they get more unfilmable from here. I talk about it in one of my other videos here, but let's just take a look at the Rotten Tomatoes, get an idea of what we're looking at. It's going to have a huge, huge debut. $80 million for a hard sci-fi. I mean, it's only PG-13, but it's really hard sci-fi. And it's the second part of a movie that did okay, but is also, it's hard to say. Like, what's it going to look like? It, it's a uh, one of those pandemic movies that you can't really evaluate properly. But the critics have it with all the critics weighing in at 332 critics at 94%. A thousand plus fan reviews, 95%. And here I am sitting, the lone critic, saying, Is this true? Was this a soulless endeavor? How did it make me feel? And I think what it boils down to is did Denis Villeneuve really understand the point of the Dune books? Because I'm thinking he doesn't. But that's the hard part. So, and, and obviously, if you're watching this, you've seen it, and there's, there's spoilers in here. But is Paul Atreides truly a hero? Is he the Messiah that was promised? Or is he an anti-hero? And that's where I think the confusion is. And I don't necessarily think that he's an anti-hero. I think... Well, I don't think I know what Frank Herbert said. Frank Herbert said that this was a warning about charismatic leaders, that we as a society, as a whole, should avoid charismatic leaders because they can walk us down the wrong path. So at the end, Paul chooses to ascend himself to the throne as the emperor of all mankind, and then he unleashes his his uh, warriors on the world as to, to make them all believers in what he is. And he sacrifices billions of lives in, in the, in the end of this. And they made some big changes about this. And I thought that the changes, I don't know how I felt about them. I don't know that I agree with them. I don't think that they were necessarily 
I don't know that they were necessary. So here's an article from Esquire. We're going to take a look at some of the differences just so that we understand. Now, I, there are some major differences for sure. And look, it's a lot of it's for the sake of time so that you understand what's going on. And they added some characters, removed some characters, shuffled some time around. They kind of shortened the time frame. All of that is fine. I get it for pacing. And I wonder if some of the, the changes were so that us as an audience would understand the true themes of it. So I believe that Denis Villeneuve decided to pick Chani, the actor Zendaya, to be our stand-in for why we should be outraged at Paul. I don't think he did a good job of it. I think she's kind of outraged for no reason at least from my view, first viewing of this, where you know they spend the first half of the film falling in love, and, and then the second half of it, she's just mad at him. But I don't think she fully fleshes out why she's mad. She just says that she doesn't believe in religion, and that the him using religion to manipulate all these people is wrong, that he shouldn't use a prophecy. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And one of the things that's interesting is they use, in the books, Chani is always on board with everything that Paul does. She doesn't, you know, veer away from anything. They don't talk, and that's another interesting thing is, is when they, they race swapped and, and gender swapped her father, her father's death was important to them. And I've noticed some people in comments have been talking about, you know, her not mentioning her father's death. Well, that's because her father wasn't in the movie. Her father was the, the guardian of change. He was the, um, the black woman in the first movie who was supposed to be the, the lead scientist Keynes was her father. And, they just completely took that character out. So her motivation for hating the Harkonnens is different. And they don't really flesh that out. All they do is they make her mad at Paul because she uses he uses her for his prophecy. And I just don't think that's enough solid ground for her to hate him. And I, like I said, I think they manipulated her character so that way you as the audience would be mad at him because... Not like at the very, very end when he he marries or he agrees to marry Princess Urlan, the 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 daughter of the of the emperor. He tells her publicly, he says, you will bear me no children as he already has a concubine, just like his father had a concubine, which was the Lady Jessica. So Chani's supposed to be his concubine and she has a baby with Paul that gets murdered by the Sordacar, which is the emperor's army. And that's why, you know, she's mad at the Harkonnens and at the Sardaukar and the emperor, you know, it gives them instead of Siege Tabar being annihilated by, by the Harkonnens, it's, it's different. And I think that changes everybody's motivations. And I just, I feel like trying to make her as a stand-in for the audience being like, oh, you know, being religious is bad. And, you know, you're, you've been pushed into a religious fer fervor is bad. And the young people are cool and smart because they don't believe in religion. And it's only those old Southern fundamentalists. The word fundamentalist is never mentioned in the books by Frank Herbert. That's just not a thing. So let's, just go through this quickly. May thy knife chip and shatter. Um, the North and the South, Fremen split, is is not something in the book whatsoever. The movie is making clear that there's a difference between the Southern fundamentalists. Again, fundamentalist does not ever appear in the text of Dune. So that's kind of confusing. And then, you know, and this article likes what the changes were and likes the Chani's path is, uh, you know, she's excellent in it. She kind of shows up as like, I'm angry for no reason. And I don't like that. And I think it's kind of weak and it just doesn't, you know, they made her a fierce warrior, which is all Fremen women are for 
fierce warriors. It's just assumed to be that way. It doesn't have to be proven by her showing off her, pro you know, her prowess in combat. But whatever. They eliminate her first pregnancy, which I think is something that's important. And it's one of the reasons why there's, you know, why do they become fundamentalists and believe in Paul? Because, you know, he can't have, you know, his first child isn't born. And, and it ties into the next movies, which Denis Villeneuve wants to do at least one of them. I don't know if he wants to do the rest of them, but he definitely, he already wrote Dune Messiah, apparently. There's already a screenplay. He already gave it to Hans Zimmer. Maybe I'll go into further detail in a different video on that. But... Yeah, this is this doesn't show it and it's it all gets condensed into one year instead of three, which I think seems strange that Paul would be so effective after one year. The other thing is his sister. There's a very brief cameo by Anya Taylor Joy, which I think most people won't understand, but she's a pivotal character in the upcoming in the in the next two books. And she's not even born in this. And she's just like, there's more problems coming, Paul. And I love you. And it's like, huh? I just don't know. I know he's going to change it, which is fine. And I'm okay with the change in the adaptation. The other thing that I think is interesting is that Paul kills the Baron. But he has to say something very specific. He says, you're going to die like an animal. In the book, <clears throat> and even the 87 movie, it's Aaliyah who kills the Baron, and she kills him with the Atreides Gom Jabbar, which is your choice. Remember, they even made a point to show it again. So in the first part, Paul puts his hand in the box, and the box, what's in the box? In the box is pain, and an animal will chew its arm off in order to escape pain, but a human will endure it because they hold the little pin, the poison needle, the Gom Jabbar, so apparently Fade Rautha also passes the Gom Jabbar test, right? Well, in the book, the Baron, who's an animal, he does not pass the test. Not that she sticks his hand in, a gom, in, in the box, but Aaliyah kills him with Gom Jabbar, which I, I think is poignant because he, he will die like an animal. So, I mean, he gets the spirit of what's going on. I thought it was just, I thought it was beautiful. I, I love the movie. Don't get me wrong. I love the movie. I think it's an amazing adaptation. But at the end of it, I felt like I, le I left the same way that I left um, Blade Runner 2049 and The Arrival and some, of other, uh, some other Denis Villeneuve films where... They're absolutely beautiful, stunning to look at, but emotionally cold. I didn't understand Shani's plight. I don't know why she was so mad. I get the fact that she feels betrayed by Paul, but they didn't set it up enough where she should have been like, you're going to marry this chick, and I'm what am I, chopped liver? If you already would have had a child with her or attempted to, I feel like she would have felt even more betrayed <clears throat> all of these things, I don't really, I, I just don't think it played as well as Denis Villeneuve thought it would. I think that because they had to, obviously, they had to condense a bunch of things, but they could have removed her doing the whole fighting scene and had them being assaulted during, you know, her pregnancy with the Sardaukar, where she killed a bunch of them, but ultimately still lost a child. I thought that would have been more poignant because you would have still proven your point that she was very deadly. But at the same point, you know, her pregnancy was important to her. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I don't know what to give it. I'm like leaning towards an 8 out of 10. I mean, it's still 10 out of 10 because this is our views will kill you and you should like and subscribe and you're going to like more of what we have. I'm going to probably do more Dune videos because this has really got me torn. I'm leaning more towards an 8, but I still love it. I thought it was amazing. I'm really happy that this adaptation gets got made. I hope there's more, but I think the changes do it a detriment, and that knocks it down a couple points, even though I did like it, because I just don't think Chinese motivation was there. It was, but it wasn't. And the whole fundamentalist thing, and those they're too cool to be religious, yet her best friend stays behind because you know she wasn't religious, <clears throat> but at the same time, she is now going to stay behind and get killed because, you know, whatever. And they also changed Fade Routha a little bit, but I, I like that as well. 
We'll discuss it more in a different video, I think, because I'm running out of time. And in the meantime, you need to check out our podcast, which streams here live on YouTube. We're also on Rumble, but also here on YouTube live, you can join us. For just $1, you get benefits, which could be a lot for you. Or you can support us in any way that you want. We do appreciate it. It helps grow the channel. We do love it. We love you. <coughs> but um, I'm choking on all the dust from the dunes. But I'm on to the next one.